Hello, 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 and welcome to another exciting edition of Jamin Kessler Says Some Crap About Some Stuff, April Fool's edition. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a trick that I use when uh, writing line segment uh, pixel data out to SPU local store. It's kind of specific, probably won't apply to you, and if it does, there might be better ways to do it, which we'll talk about later. Let's get started. Okay, so let's say that this grid represents LS memory. LS memory is divided into vectors where a vector starts on a 16 byte boundary and it is 16 bytes long. So here we have four pixels, each one is 32 bits or four words, and that is the first vector in memory. So this would be another vector right next to it and just to really hammer the point home, that is yet a third vector. Okay, so let's figure out what problem we want to deal with. Okay, so here are two lines that you might want to rasterize out. I guess we'll call them line segments. Um, they are fundamentally different, even though they may not look like they are. One of them is nice to work with, and the other one provides some issues. So if you look at all the pixels that the green lines touch, none of those pixels are in the same vector as any other ones. So you basically never touch the same vector twice as you're writing it out. Uh, we cannot say that about the red line. With the red line, we have uh, these two points right here, which are both in the same vector, and this is a problem when you're writing things out to SPU local store, and you're trying to do it using scalar writes. So, okay, here's the problem more specifically. Because SPU memory has to be read and written in these vectors, you can't load a single scalar, you have to load the entire vector that that scalar exists in. We're going to go ahead and load this. Now those 8 and 6 are things that already exist in memory, things we've already written, and the x and the x are the next two pixels that we want to write out. So we load in the original vector, we load in again a vector for the other pixel. Now coincidentally they happen to be in the same vector. You know, you're going to be loading these no matter what, and if they happen to exist in the same vector, you're going to load them twice. You don't really know at compile time. So then we're going to generate some values that maybe we want to insert. Go ahead and insert them. Write the first one back out to memory, and then write the second one back out to memory. Now what just happened? We totally blew away the value that we had written with that first write. Now to get around this, the compiler has to do something that's incredibly inefficient and a little bit annoying. So I'll show you that right now. Okay, so here's the same example. This time, we're only going to load in the vector that contains the first pixel we want to write. Calculate a value to insert. Insert it. Then write it back out. Now, we're going to deal with the last pixel. We're going to load whatever is in memory there generate a value for the pixel, insert it, and write it back out. Now, the annoying thing here is that we could not even begin processing for that second pixel until we had written out the one previous and then read something back in. And that is absolutely horrible for pipelining and for efficiency. So let's go ahead and look at some generated assembly to see this problem in a real world situation. Okay, so we'll start out with the C code actually. Uh, this is some code that you will probably never have to write, but we're just writing out three scalar values. That's all we're doing. It looks simple, nothing really big. Now it generates this pattern that we were just talking about, where shuff B is what we're using to insert the pixel value into the proper place. So we've already loaded it at this point. We're inserting the pixel value we want, then we're writing it back out to memory. Then we're loading something back in, maybe the same vector, maybe not, you know, you don't really know at compile time. Shuffle to insert the pixel we want, write it back out, store something back in. Shuffle to insert the pixel, write it back out. So, as you can see, there's a tremendous amount of wasted time because we can't do any pixel related stuff for pixels two and three until we write out pixel one and then read it back in, then write out pixel two and read it back in. Okay, so here's how we're gonna try and solve the problem from a high-level idea. So let's say that these two vectors are actually two completely different vectors. Um, so one exists at address 0, the other one exists at address 
4096. So we're going to pass these things into a magic mask, and that magic mask is going to output the original two vectors. We're going to write the first one out, then we're going to write the second one out. Now, because they're at two different addresses, it's perfectly safe to write one out and then write the other one out. They're not going to trample each other because they're two different places. Now, let's look at the case where these two vectors actually are the same vector in LS. Okay, so I know it looks like the same, but we're going to pretend the address is 0 and 0 this time, ignoring the fact that, well, anyway. Pass it into the magic mask, and the magic mask this time, instead of leaving the vectors alone and letting them pass through as is, is going to merge them, giving us this. So we're going to do what we did before, where we write out one, and then we write out the other, except this time, when the second one clobbers the first one, it doesn't really matter because they're the exact same. We're clobbering over it with the exact same thing that we wrote out the first time. So, how do you build these magic masks? That's what the trick is. Okay, so you start off, let's say we're writing three pixels out, and these are the addresses that we want to write them to. So, one's at, uh, but the first two are in the same vector, and the second one is totally different, so you can get an example of both. Okay, so step one is you're going to take the address, and you're going to end it by F, and what that does is that gives you the byte position within the vector. So you're ignoring everything else and you're only looking at 0 through 15, you know, which byte inside the vector are you. And we're going to do the same thing for the thing on the right. Cool, which gives us that. Next step is we're going to take 16 and subtract that value we just calculated from it, giving us C. And then we're going to do this again. Now this step is not strictly needed, actually, we're going to use these as rotate amounts, but there are ways to do it to get around it so that you don't have to do this. I'm just explaining because it'll be easier to make the animations for it. Okay, we're going to call this vec offset, or the byte offset within the vector that we're going to use to rotate by. So vec offset's probably not a good name. Maybe rotate amount would have been better. Okay, now we're going to take the address, and we're going to essentially do the opposite of what we did with that previous and. We're going to get rid of the information that tells you what byte is it in the individual vector and we're going to only keep the vector number. And then we're going to do this again for the other side and then for the last one. Followed by a compare equal. So this is going to be all f's if they're equal and it's going to be all zeros if they're not equal. And these two are not equal so it's going to be all zeros. Now this little piece of magic here is how we know if two things are in the same vector. So when I first started out, I said that the first two pixels would occur in the first vector. Now we know for sure because we've compared what vector number they're in, so to speak, and gotten these masks. So now we have some semi-useful looking values. Let's see if we can actually do something with them. Okay, now ignore the junk on the right side of the screen because it's, um, well, my lack of keynote ability and I don't know how to fade them in properly. So we're going to take this starting vector which is all F's in the first position, and then all zeros in the second, third, and fourth position, and we're going to rotate it by VEC offset, which in this case is C. So we're going to go ahead and do that rotation. That is so nice. So nice. Then we're going to take it, and we're going to and it by the value in is same VEC, which is all F's, giving us the original thing we just calculated back. This is going to be our first magic mask. Now the second magic mask we're going to take this other value, which is 0, followed by all Fs in the other positions, and we're going to rotate it by 16 bytes. Now, vectors themselves are 16 bytes, so if you rotate a vector by 16 bytes, it's going to be itself. So I'm not going to show the rotation, just assume that this thing is rotated, and in this case, it happens to be the same one. We're going to end it by is same vec, which for the thing on the right is 0, giving us all zeros. So that's it. Those are our two magic masks, and we're all done. Now, one of the cool things is because most of this information is based off of the byte position in the vector, and there's only 16 possibilities, you can just pre-compute a table and get rid of almost all these calculations. You can just do one single load, and then you're done. You have your magic mask for what you want to do. So it's actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, you don't have to go through all these calculations. I just wanted to show you how you would arrive at the numbers that go to the table. And there are better ways to do this, by the way.
okay, so here's how you would actually use them. You just basically take those masks, which are vector combinor, is that combiner? Oh my god, I can't even read. Vector combiner one and vector combiner two. Um, and then for the middle one, you just use is same vector one or two, which will either pass it through or, you know, give you the, the other one back. So that's it. And then you're free to write those three vectors out, just one after the other, and not actually worry about them trampling the memory of the thing that got written before. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, and here's the final version. So you'll notice that while the other thing was, and they're doing the same thing, by the way, the other thing was maybe 30 something cycles. You know, now we have this loop here that's 16 cycles, 17 cycles, and this is the long version. This is with all the calculations and all this other crap. Almost all of this goes away and it becomes a single load when you do it the other way. So yeah, I mean, you can't really compare this to the original example directly, but you know, it's uh, it's phenomenally more efficient to do this this way. Uh, one caveat that I should tell you before going, the pixels have to be written in the order that they occur in the line segment. So you can't do pixel zero, then pixel two, then pixel one. And the reason for this is because to minimize the amount of compares that we do with the masks, we compare A to B and then B to C. So we don't actually compare A and C because it's assumed that, you know, if a and B are in different vectors, then there's no way that C can be in the same vector as A. It's just a assumption I use to kind of, you know, optimize some stuff. Uh, mind you, if you're doing this for real, instead of writing individual scalar pixels out, you might want to generate some geometry and just send it off to the RSX or whatever GPU it is you're using. Okay, well that's it. Um, I hope you had fun. Uh, enjoy your April Fool's Day. Screw with someone you love and uh, Cool. I'm out. Have fun. Thanks.